So definitely phi is 0 which means that this term would be 0 from the Hamiltonian and then we will see what is the consequence of this divergence less a that we will see. The consequence is following we will be able to write down this to be uh, minus h car square by 2m. So I am explicitly writing this p momentum operator is nothing but i h cut del operator. So this is plugged in so I will be able to get this this is the kinetic energy operator we get in general in absence of the interaction between electromagnetic field and an electron and then this part <coughs> this part will be taken to be E by M this is going to be um, we will we'll, we'll see that what would be this part and that that, that we have to uh, figure out here. So, we will write down slowly. Um, first of all uh, this this vector quantity can be written as this is another vector identity basically can be written as plus that is the vector identity we have. And uh, because uh, this is divergence less one can write down this to be like this. So, one can conclude that uh, if it is so then one can conclude that this for the given Coulomb gauge this this del operator and vector potential commutes. And because it commutes one can write down equals a dot del. Or one can write down plus this equals 2 of a dot del one can write down this one. So, this is exactly what we have here this is the momentum operator this is momentum operator. So, one can convert this momentum operator and we can use it. So, I can use the explicit form of the momentum operator and one can write down as minus i h cut e by 2 m then this is going to be like this plus a dot this plus e square by 2 m a square and this term is 0. So, we are neglecting it. So, this is the Hamiltonian we have current Hamiltonian we have here and because of this vector identity one can plug this one here this part here. So, finally one can write down as minus h car square by 2 m del square minus i h cut e by m then a dot this. So, this is the Hamiltonian. When you are doing this Hamiltonian we are neglecting this part as well. We are neglecting this part saying that because 
we will say that light this field strength or the potential strength is so weak it is we are actually working on electron and a weak field interaction electromagnetic field interaction. So, we are saying that the vector potential field itself is so weak that its square terms would be even weaker than that. So, those terms are neglected and that is called weak field approximation. So, the interaction of an electron with light when you will be presenting here we are actually using weak field approximation. And uh, in terms of photon what does it mean? We are actually treating one photon process. That means, I can have uh, absorption of one photon or emission of one photon, but I cannot have two photon processes like two photon absorption or two photon emission process. Those in, in, in those case, I need a stronger field and the stronger field for stronger field, this term cannot be neglected, this term has to be included. So, finally, this is my Hamiltonian and I, I will just uh, erase the parts and I will clearly write down um, uh, final uh, time dip, dip, dependence Orringer equation, how does it look like with this approximation and the interaction Hamiltonian, total Hamiltonian. So, I have I H cut then psi, this is three dimensional wave function which is nothing but H naught, H naught coming from this part. You can imagine if the electron was present, only electron was present in the in the medium, there is no interaction, then I should have got this kinetic energy part of the electron, just like a free particle. Electron is a free particle, so it will have a kinetic energy part. So that is I am calling it H naught plus I now have due to this interaction I now have this time dependent um, um, time dependent this um, uh, this potential part. So, this is the first time we are introducing time dependent potential and time dependent potential comes from this uh, this vector potential or the light interaction. So, here H naught for the free particle is nothing but H, H cut square by 2 m kinetic energy operator which we see always in the for the free particle. But in addition to this free particle Hamiltonian, we have the interaction Hamiltonian which is a time dependent Hamiltonian which is represented by I H cut E by M vector potential dot product with the del operator. So, that is the, uh, that's the uh, nature of the interaction Hamiltonian we have under Coulomb gauge condition under weak field approximation. So, these are the uh, approximations we have made to uh, specify the uh, time dependent Hamiltonian. And one can say that because it is weak field, this is weak, this is already weak and that is why higher order terms is neglected. One can use this time dependent perturbation theory to solve this, this equation and that is exactly what we will do. So, what is the perturbation? What is the nature of the perturbation? The nature of the perturbation is given here in terms of vector potential. So, to clarify one more time the entire problem for getting all this mathematical rigor, uh, rigor here, I have an electron sitting in vacuum. It is, it is, it is, it is traveling particular velocity it can have the velocity is must be less than much less than c so that it is non relativistic electron but it is it is in the vacuum and then light is also propagating through the medium when light is propagating through the medium it is creating the vector potential or or in other words the field is created by the vector potential so inside the medium now i have a vector potential uh, 
um, uh, in, in, in the medium and that vector potential is going to interact with that electron and that interaction potential is given by this, this term interaction potential. So, that interaction potential time dependent interaction potential has to be included in the total Hamiltonian to get the solution of this problem. Now, uh, as we are interested in atom, now going from this electron to atom only thing we need to uh, change is that for an atom I have nucleus with a positive charge, I have an electron with a negative charge and then the entire system is in the vacuum now. And now I have light is propagating through the medium that is why I have vector potential which will be interacting with both charges. I have this charge, I have this charge. Both charges will be affected by the vector potential inside this inside the medium. So, that is the situation for, for, for let us say hydrogen atom that is a simplified atom with light interaction. Now, to describe a hydrogen atom in an electromagnetic field, we must take into account the presence of nuclear charge, nuclear charge, positive charge I have included here. So, because it is negative charge here, so it is going to be positive plus E charge and also it has a mass m and this has a mass m. Now, since m that is the mass of the nucleus is very large compared to electron mass. So, we will say that the interaction between radiation field and nuclear charge can be neglected. It is not displaced by uh, it is not uh, affected by this vector potential or the light field. So, one can say that M does not move, this nuclei does not move, is, it, it does not affect, it does not affect. It can affect if the potential, this vector potential, the field strength is so high, extremely high, then it can affect. But we have already considered this is a weak field approximation and in the weak field approximation, this nuclear charge is not getting affected by the vector field. So, we can ignore that. So, this charge and light field interaction can be neglected. So, we, we, we neglect that part it does not have any uh, effect with this interaction. Only thing which will be interacting is this electron and this. But at the same time the unperturbed Hamiltonian has an interaction term between this is the Coulomb interaction term between the nucleus and the electron. So, previously for the free electron, electron plus light we have written um, the time independent Schrodinger equation, time dependent Schrodinger equation as this, where H naught plus H dash T psi that is the way we have written. Now, uh, and, and, and H naught unperturbed Hamiltonian was nothing but the uh, kinetic energy operator of a free particle and H dash was minus I H cut E by M A dot del operator that was the H dash. Now, for hydrogen atom plus light we will be able to write down the same thing I have unperturbed Hamiltonian plus this is a perturbation time dependent perturbation or the interaction part of the Hamiltonian. In that case I have 
this Hamiltonian, the unperturbed Hamiltonian is going to be now the kinetic energy part plus there is a potential energy part also which is present even I do not have the interaction in absence of light. But it is time dependent interaction term is remains to be the same. So, unperturbed Hamiltonian uh, the form of the unperturbed Hamiltonian has changed and here I, sh I could have another term for the hydrogen atom which is due to this charge of the nucleus, but because its mass is so heavy as you can see that m comes in the, so if I, if I, if I want to write down that uh, contribution I should have write, written down like this way E by m a like this, but m is so large that this part would be neglected because it is inversely proportional with respect to this part. So, one can use only this part as an interaction Hamiltonian for the hydrogen atom problem as well, hydrogen atom in, a, in presence of the electric field, uh, in presence of the electromagnetic field which is um, showing up as a vector potential here. So, in, in, in light atom interactions we are primarily interested in exploring different features which make decisive role uh, for an atom to make transition from its own uh, one stationary state to another stationary state. So, what happens in light atom interaction uh, because of this interaction uh, this atom can actually undergo a transition from one state to the another state. So, Let us say this is initial state, this is final state. it will undergo a transition or it can undergo this transition as well. Then it is going to be, so I should I should name it in a different way, initial final is different. I can have uh, n state and I can have m state. So, one transition it can undergo. This transition process is often explored using the time dependent first order perturbation theory which assumes that the atom was present in one of its stationary states before the light atom interaction process was initiated. So, we will just go over one more time uh, because we are going to use this light atom in, uh, the uh, uh, time dependent perturbation theory to solve this problem. Uh, we will just go over the condition which we employ uh, when we use this uh, perturbation theory, this time dependent perturbation theory. So, for that uh, we will just remind that perturbation theory assumes that the system was present in a particular uh, stationary state. So, this Hamiltonian, this uh, in absence of light the unperturbed Hamiltonian can give me a number of states. For hydrogen atom we know this is 1s, 2s, 2p like that different states I have. All these states can be obtained from uh, time independence Sorringer equation which is given by H naught psi k naught r equals E k naught psi k naught r. This is time independence Sorringer equation and from this time independence Sorringer equation I can get all the possible stationary state. And then we assume that the atom before the interaction in this in this in this vacuum medium it's in it, before the interaction of light it was present in one of the stationary states let's say it can be in the ground state it can be somewhere it was it was present in the one of the stationary states and if it is present in the stationary state one stationary state um, then then suddenly this light atom interaction Initi was initiated and it was initiated at t equals 0. So, this H Hamiltonian T acting on the atom from time t equals 0 to t equals t 1 time 
it is acting, interaction is going on. And during this interaction time, so during this interaction time, I will assume that it was in n state first before the interaction started and during this interaction time which is 0 to T1 time during this interaction time if I have to present the wave function um, then that wave function will be represented by this time dependence Schrodinger equation. So, this T has a limit of 0 to T1 any time T. So, at any time T how the system looks like that will be described by this time dependence Schrodinger equation within this time interval interaction time and the moment interaction is over and, 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 and during this interaction time this psi would be represented as a linear combination of stationary states. And this part is giving the population of a particular state, here it is the kth state. So, if the transition, if, if this interaction, light atom interaction which is happening for the interval 0 to T1 time, if the system is undergoing a transition let us say from n state to m state, then this C m the population of transition uh, population at m state population in m -th state that is the final state where the transition is occurring at time t1 just immediately after the interaction has been switched off. Immediately after that time I will check the population and that population will be given by C m square modulus of square of C m and this C m is represented by this C m will be finally represented by um, the time dependent first order perturbation theory in terms of time dependent perturbation theory that is going to be given by minus i by h cut 0 to t 1 e to the power i omega m n t psi m 0 dt. So, it, it C m will depend on this population in the m s state final m s state at time t 1 after the interaction is just switched off immediately after that it will depend on the entire history of time and entire history of time it means that it is the integration between 0 to t 1 time we have to do that and that is that is what, what does it mean. So, basically we are interested in this population final state population after the interaction and that interaction is given by first order perturbation theory where I have to cal I have this interaction term inside this integration this integration over the space. So, uh, we will stop here and um, we will continue this session uh, we will continue this module in the next session.